Hello, my name is still Daryl Wahlberg, and I'm still a Jehovah's Witness in good standing. Now, this video is not approved by the Watchtower Bible Tract Society of Pennsylvania. It's not approved by the eight faithful, dear, loving, self-sacrificing brothers labeled the governing body today and labeled the faithful and discreet slave by Jesus 2,000 years ago in Matthew 24, 45 through 47. It's also not approved by any local body of elders. Once again, I work for Jesus Christ and he approves this and he works for his father and his father approves it. I don't work for any humans on the face of this earth. So today we're going to discuss do the stars control your life? You know, Satan has methods. And Satan's methods of operations are, on humans are one, uh, and, I, and I'll try to I'll try to list them all here. I think there's a little over sixty of them. But, uh, astrology, bad associations, uh, beliefs in superiority, white supremacy, blurs people view of Jehovah. He is competitive. He, he puts a competitive spirit in us, convincing people of being unloved or worthlessness or worthy, worthiness, worthy, worthiness. Uh, convincing people they are too busy, convincing people they need little spiritual food, deception, demonism, and desires of the eyes, the uh, discouragement, difficulties, diabolical choices. Uh, dissatisfaction, distractions, division, doubts, entertainment, of course, expelling demons, which cannot be done today, false religion, false religious teachings, family opposition, fantasies, fear, guilt feelings, human wisdom, humiliation, incites genocide, independence, Intimidation, isolation, lies about Jehovah, love of the world, masses of people, materialism, memories of abuse, maybe when you were a child, murder, music, persecution, personal differences, importance, omens, pressure to compromise, presuming on Jehovah's undeserved kindness, propaganda, which many of you apostates are into, return in different guises, ridicule, seduction, sex, spiritism, spiritual apathy, temptations, truth misapplied, use of afflictions, use of anger, use of natural desires, use of uncontrolled speech, use of unfairness, use of weakness or flaws, weakening one's zeal for Jehovah, and that's just the name of you. Now, do the stars really control your life? Let's take the first one, astrology. A lot of people want to know the usual nonsense things. When I am going to make a million dollars or when I will meet Mr. Wonderful, says a part-time astrologer. Indeed, most people approach astrology as a means of learning something about their futures. And many astrologers are eager to oblige them by catering to their wishes, for a fee, of course. However, astrologers who consider themselves up to date disdain such a view. That's not what I'm about, continues the part-time practitioner. I'm about trying to help people understand themselves. In what way, then, is astrology supposed to help people understand themselves? Everyone knows that human activities are influenced by sun, moon, and stars. The sun determines the season and the growing cycle. The moon is the main force behind the tides. The stars have long been used as guides in navigation. It is 
is it conceivable then that these heavenly bodies also play an influential role in other activities in our lives? Astrology's answer is, yes, it does. <laughs> the basic tenet of astrology is that the position of the sun, the moon, and the planets among the mystical constellations at the time of our birth plays an influential role in our character and in our life. Thus, knowing a person's time and place of birth, an astrologer can construct a chart or horoscope showing the positions of the stars and the planets and interpret the factors that may influence that person's actions at any particular time. What is the basis for this claim? How sound is it? As an experiment, the French psychologist uh, Michel uh, Gauquelin sent the birth date and birthplace of an executed murderer to an astrologer for analysis. Then he sent the result to 150 people who had responded to his ad offering free horoscope analysis. The result, he found that 90% of the people said that the analysis they received was an accurate description of their personality and 80% said that even their friends and families agreed. So much for objective reasoning. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that astro astrological readings are usually couched in such vague language, and human nature is such a complex thing that if one is bent on looking for something that fits, one will always be able to find it no matter what the reading is based on the source. All of this brings us to the ultimate issue. Assuming that the stars do play a role in influencing our life, in what way is that influence exerted on us? Of all the forces known to science, which one or ones are involved? Because the stars and planets are so far away, one scientist observed that with respect to the effect on a newborn child, the gravitational tug of the attending physician and the electromagnetic radiation of the lights in the room are greater than any of the planets. If the stars do not influence us by gravitational or electromagnetic or any other forces known to science, then what is the source of the influence? Stupidity, most likely. This intriguing question is addressing is addressed by a professor of ast astronomy, George Abel, in the book Science and the Paranormal. After examining all the claims made by astrologers regarding the power of the stars and planet, Abel writes, if the planets were to exert an influence on us, it would have to be through an unknown force and one with very strange properties. It, it would have to emanate from some, but not all, celestial bodies. Have to affect some, but not all, things on Earth. And its strength could not depend on distances, masses, or other characteristics of those planets giving rise to it. In other words, it would lack the universality, order, and harmony found for every other force in nature, natural law ever discovered that applies in the real universe. Science knows of no such force. If astrology works at all, it would have to work with a force or forces outside of the real universe. Uh, but remembering that astrology has its roots in ancient Babylon, where the stars and the planets were worshipped as gods, it should not be surprising that the source of its influence influence is not from the real universe, but from the supernatural. The power behind astrology. The Bible shows that the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. Please turn with me in your Bibles, and we're going to consider 1 John chapter 5. And verse 19, and it reads, now I'm going to uh, quote, quote from the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures, but hey, whatever Bible you have is fine. It does not matter. We know that we originate with God. 
But the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. I don't see any exception there to astrology. Satan, the devil, who is an invisible but powerful spirit creature, capable of controlling and manipulating people and events on earth. He's the wicked one. By maneuvering things to make certain predictions appear to come true. For instance, let's say that I write an article in astrology. If you were born under this sign today, you're going to meet your true love. You're going to find a job today. And you're going to come into some money. Now, if I make those predictions, I'm sure that there are people in the world that were born on this, under this sign today where that actually happens. Well, I've ever just got to catch up. By maneuvering things to make certain predictions appear to come true, Satan and the demons have successfully captured the people's fancy. Perhaps that just caught your fancy. And I'm going to get an email. Guess what? Guess what? Gerald Wildberg, guess what? It came true. I met the girl of my life, the love of my life. I came into some money and I got a new job today. Wow, buddy, you're good. This generality. Of course, somebody's going to have that happen to them today. There's almost 7 billion people on the face of this earth. There's almost 8 billion, actually. Satan and the demons have, successfully, have, success, have successfully captured people by that game, that con game. Scientifically, though, what sort of predictions are those that have supposedly come true? Are they not mostly about death, murders, assassination, disease, disasters, things sinister, and macabre, 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 characteristically satanic and demonic? The simple truth is that astrology is one of those machinations of the devil that he uses to control people and influence people. Please turn with me to, in your Bibles again, and this time we're going to the book of Ephesians. And that's Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to read verse 11. Put on the complete suit of armor from God so that you may be able to stand firm against the crafty acts of the devil. Stand firm with that suit of armor. The simple truth is that astrology is one of the machinations of the devil that he uses to control and influence people to serve his purpose. He, the Bible calls him the bird catcher. Has he caught you? Do you go run to check the astrology charts every day? Read the horoscopes in the newspaper? Or check them online? Is that you? You run to do that in the morning? Oh, I can't go anywhere unless I read my horoscope. <laughs> He's got you, the bird catcher. Now, what is that purpose? The God, Satan, of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ. And Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. To that end, astrology has served its master well. Australian astrophysicist Vince Ford observed, astrology has become a sort of a religion, but it is quite unprovable. All I can say is that I'm sorry those who believe in it don't take responsibility for their actions rather than blaming them on poor old stars. <laughs> Most of those stars up there you're looking at are burned out millennia ago, millennia ago, thousands and thousands of years. In the 8th century in BCE, that's 800 and so, uh, 
700 BCE. But anyways, in the 8th century BCE, the prophet Isaiah was inspired to issue a taunting challenge to the astrologers. And let them stand up now, he says in Isaiah 47, 13, and save you, the worshipers of the heavens, the lookers at the stars, those giving out knowledge at the new moons concerning the things that will come upon you. See, astrology is nothing new. The three dudes that came to Jesus Christ were astrologers from Babylon. They weren't kings. There's nowhere in the Bible that it says they were kings. And they weren't wise men. They were magi, magicians. Magician, magic, magic is against the scriptures. It has to do with spiritism. Isaiah 47, 13. Matthew chapter 2. One who believes in astrology gives in to the fan fatalistic view that whatever will be, will be, because it is written in the stars. This is tantamount to denying the will of God, or the responsibility of humans to act according to that will. In other words, you're all predestined. If you think that astrology has the signs, if you fall under those signs, you're predestined. You have no freedom of choice. In short, a murderer that wakes up today and goes gets grabs his gun out of the drawer, goes down to rob a bank and kill somebody, he was born it was in the stars. Or how about your child molester? A lot of you apostates like to associate with child molesters. Oh yeah, you do. Marcia the Hooligan, Veronica Vanderpuke, Minnie Bandana Head, Jerk Boy, Nightmare Theater. All well, you guys associated with Bobby Ploss, an admitted child molester. You forget that? No, you don't forget it. Come on, you all know that. He admitted that he molested his own brother. <laughs> so here it is. Oh, Bobby Ploss was born a child molester. How can you hold it against him? It was in the stars. Thieves. They're in the stars. They're, they're thieves by the stars. So we shouldn't throw any of them in prison. Murderers, thieves, child molesters, rapists. It's in the stars. <laughs> so rather than look to the stars for signs and omens to guide our lives, what can we learn from the stars? Yes, what can the stars really tell us? Well, my next, the next point here. Is astrology scientific? Scientific discoveries in more recent times have presented formidable challenges for astrology. Consider these facts. One. It is now known that the stars that appear to be in the constellation are not really in that group. Some of them are deep in space, others are relatively close. Thus, the zodiacal properties of the various constellations are purely imaginary. Two. The planets Uranus, and Neptune, and Pluto were unknown to early astrologers, for they were not discovered until the invention of the telescope. How then were their influences accounted for by the astrological charts drawn up centuries earlier? And three, the science of heredity tells us that our personality traits are formed not at birth, but at conception. When one of the millions of sperm cells from the father unites with the egg cell from the mother, yet astrology fixes one's horoscopes by the moment of birth, nine months later. So, nothing is going on during that nine months. <laughs> the part of the sky through which the sun, the moon, and the planets appear to move, called the zodiac, is divided by astrologers into 12 equal portions, each with one const constellation as its sign. In reality, there are 14 constellations in that part of the sky. They are not equal in size, and they overlap each other to some extent. 
So the charts drawn up by astrologers bear no actual physical resemblance to what's actually in the sky. The timing of the sun's journey among the constellations as seen by an earthbound observer is today about one month behind what it was 2,000 years ago when the astrologers' charts and tables were drawn up. Thus, astrology would cast a person born in late June or early July as a cancer. Highly sensitive, moody, reserved. Because by the charts, the sun is in the constellation Cancer. Actually, however, the sun is in the constellation Gemini, which would presumably make the person communicative, witty, and chatty. Sound confusing? The astrologers are confused. Astrology, as it is practiced in the West, ascribes, ascribes uh, special characteristics to each of the twelve constellations through which the sun appears to travel during the course of the year. Uh, these star groups were named by the Greeks, who visualized them as creatures such as Aries the Ram, Taurus, Taurus the Bull, and Gemini the Twins. Interestingly, astrology in ancient China and Japan also divides the zodiac into 12 regions, corresponding to the 12 animals of the so-called terrestrial branches, dog, chicken, monkey, goat, horse, and so on. And each of these animals is said to exert its influence according to its characteristic or character over a certain period of time. Thus, corresponding portions of the heavens are designated by Eastern and Western astrology in the following manner. Here's the Western Zodiac, Western Zodiac and Eastern Zodiac together. Aries, the ram dog. Taurus, the bull chicken. Gemini, the twins monkey. Cancer, the crab goat. Leo, the lion horse. Virgo, the virgin snake. Libra, the balanced dragon. Scorpio, the scorpion hare. Sagittarius, the archer tiger. Capricorn, the goat bull. Aquarius, the water bearer rat. Pisces, the fish's pig. What do we find when we compare these two systems? Strangely, the constellations seem to work in totally different ways in the East from the West. Thus, Western astrology predicts that a person born when the sun is in Aries, for example, is assertive and Taurus stubborn and so on. But these are hardly qualities one would associate with the dog and the chicken. Yet, that is what Eastern astrology would predict. The same can be said about other pairs. Thus, depending on which system you choose, the same stars are said to possess completely different characteristics. One hand here, one hand here, east, west. And presumably exert different influences. Is it the stars? Or is it the imagination of the astrologers and Satan the devil that wields the control? You be the judge of that. because they can't get away from it, and neither can you. Hey, thanks for watching this video, and have a great day.